Hello and welcome to my studio again. Uh, today I'm going to paint a very attractive subject, uh, some lit pomegranates. And I hope I will be able at least to do some of it because I know that the sun is moving fast. But uh, I'll try to paint and explain what I can and see how much I will be able to, done in, to, be, to get done. So I'll explain what I did with my panel. So I just pre uh, toned it a little and I kind of put outlines and some values on my pomegranate so to save some time I used a mixture of transparent red oxide and ultramarine blue and actually at that time I didn't have sun and then I saw sun and I opened the curtain and decided to do a different way so not all my values are quite right then I changed my tabletop from dark to lighter I put it in a wooden board so as you see even not sun is changing and the weather conditions but as you go with your setup you just see different things and trying to adjust them so we'll see how I am going to capture this changeable subject because it changed in my mind already so we'll see what happens on the canvas so I'll start from my darkest values. I'm using ultramarine and a little bit of alizarin and a little bit of transparent oxide red. But I see more cool shadows right now because it's so well sunlit and we know that the sun or the light is warm. You can actually see that your shadows get a little cooler not always because I have in this one I have lots of reflection but at this point I will just paint how I see it and then I'll see how many reflections will come also and I'm adding a little bit more of card red light at this point Starting from my, actually it's card red dip, sorry, card red dip. And now I'm going with a little bit of card red light on this side because this is my Brightest side. As we go on top, I can see that pomegranate has some hints of yellow in, in the actual tip or tail of the pomegranate kind of drags here and I'm trying to keep my color clean here wiping my brush very often I don't want a lot of contamination in this beautiful color, even though I already did it. But it has some darks in it, so it's not purely red color. And like I said in my other videos, I will show my setup and my palette afterwards because I don't have that ability yet technically but one day I'll get there so as I talk as I talk my pomegranate this lit part, I missed it. 
a little bit. So at this point I'm using cadmium red light and I add a touch of white because I want to see how my highlight will look here. So my highlight is going to be warm because it has a lot of sun falling on it. Change brush. why I want to add highlight now because my like setup and sun changes so fast so I want to kind of get it now before it changed any further just realized my microphone was off a little so I hope you could hear me clearly so I'm going to fix it quickly yeah, yeah should be okay should be pretty good sound surprising how many colors and how many shades of red and pink pomegranate has in it. So there is some reflection here because I have next to it I have pomegranate that cut but it's not as strong so I just grasp a little bit of it but not too much then I'll continue At this point I want to curve around it a little bit just to see my values and where I am is my values so quickly mix my background color it's more on brown side and because of sun falling it's kind of warm brown that's how I see it now and it goes a little bit at the back it's a little darker Yeah, it goes in the shed, shade and my second pomegranate comes in the picture at that time. So I'm mixing some transparent oxide red and ultramarine again and then I'm mixing some yellow ochre and white and I just spoiled the tip of my <laughs> pomegranate. want to lose my shadows I'm not going to go too much into detail at this point because I can always add it later just want to make sure I don't lose it completely even though this tip is very very bright
and it is an interesting shape it has kind of different uh, planes to it that we need to explore while we're painting it so this is my plate my plate is blue and I can see some blue and white in it because this plate has some blue and white so I think I will do a little bit of that as well just a little and I'll continue with my background color that's where I started the darkest part of my background is here but I think I'll keep a very sharp edge here on this side because that's where the sharpest part of pomegranate, pomegranate also comes in the light so for now I'll just leave it like this just give me idea what background is going to be like and I need more red as well I'm going to put some Red color, the main color that I got finished. Okay, so I'll try to keep this sharp and not to lose it. Yeah, this is a very beautiful color. continue with my plate I'm wondering which brush to use so I can just so this value will be okay for now the sun is actually so warm so I'm adding a little bit of cut yellow dip into my front part of back of background yeah at this point I may add even more warmth to it and more light but this is not the main focus so I think more importantly now to continue with the plate and pomegranates themselves so I use a smaller brush for plate Actually no, I'll use still the same brush, but just a little bit smaller. Um, so there is a little bit of blue-purple kind of color with this plate. A little bit of light here, but not too bright, not as the pomegranate itself. So I'm just using very thin wash very thin paint don't want to overdo it so it's a little bit darker in the shade didn't knock off my phone again I'm going to wipe it a little yeah I did sorry sorry I moved it a little <laughs> try not to touch it yeah. still not used to all these technical devices so I have to move it a bit just to make it more okay continue with the plate so there is a little bit more white and actually like kind of warm white yeah. and the same similar kind of color so at this point 
I'm using a mix of yellow, a little bit of brown and blue just, just to show the shadow of the plate so my tabletop will go around it so I'll curve it around as I said my tabletop is a brown box or brown board so I'll just do a suggestion of that Let's see which value is going to be have some pomegranate uh, seeds on it as well paint around them or oh, add them later this is not a very important part oh, my son will really moving a little shadow here but that's from I think my lamp not far from the window kind of casting the shadow but I'll keep it for now because it's interesting shadow blue, blue and brown give some variation to the tabletop so I continue with the plate this is my bluish brownish color and I make it kind of gray it's uh, really it's a warm gray that's what it is even though it's in the shadow there is lots of in the shade there's lots of uh, warmth to it surprisingly obviously it's because of reflections so now I will do cast shadow between the plate and the pomegranate and it's very dark you see this is one of the darkest parts in comparison with the pomegranate and I think I will go all the way from plate into the shadow with one shape Too yellow. Too yellow. Now I see a lot more blue there. That's very interesting. All changes. I definitely see more blue. At the same time, there is a kind of light track here for the troops I'm not I'm not going to spend lots of time on the plate but I need to be sure that I get the shape right at least the one that in the light because the other part is kind of covered by pomegranate so let me just add a little bit more here now I know the color of this so now I'm going to my second pomegranate here slip it here so my tabletop is going to be very warm 
in places where the sun falls. I want to put some of that as well. And then I go to second pomegranate. Yeah. Interesting reflections here, so I get those in. want to lose it again okay a little bit more light on tabletop because I think it's much brighter yes especially in the Sun I don't want to do very sharp shadows here But interestingly enough, because of the sun, they are actually very, very kind of distinct, not very um, soft, just because the sun falls straight on the tabletop. Okay, now I'm going to my second pomegranate. I have to wash my brush quite well both of my brushes because again don't want contamination of the color so again i'm taking ultramarine blue and some alizarin just a little bit of transparent red oxide and here i go in the shade where the uh, the second pomegranate is a cut on a grenade so starting there I'm just kind of squinting trying not to look at the separate grains or anything find a shadow color for the I think it's a cooler gray the skin of pomegranate so I'm using again the same kind of colors ultramarine and um, transparent oxide brown and white just can create all okay, I'm added a little bit of actually cut red just to see how that is going to work. And then probably change my brush again for a little smaller. Um, the brightest parts within pomegranate yeah, kind of this color. Very bright white. With some yellowish and bluish colors. That kind of goes around the ridge of pomegranate. Now I'm going to put my 
shade of color all around it. Kind of goes like this and like this. I'm adding more glycerin as I go in the light so it has more color and in the back has more blue in it because it has lots of reflections lots of different reflections from tabletop, from as a pomegranate, from has light from sun. So I have to kind of modify it slightly. So there is more red here. in my small brush again so I'm not working on the details of any grain yet any seeds I'm only putting them the one that I when I squint the one that I see not putting any highlights on them nothing do that later. At this point I just want to get the shape and I want to get the, some of the lights, some of the lights from the shadow. These lights are not as distinct. a little bit of this color at the ridge of the and so there is a little bit of brown color like light brown almost beige color going on the ridge so I want to get that in as well it's a mixture between dull pink and brown so I added a little bit of terra rose actually that's the color I'm using this time it's quite nice warm color and I go all around where I see it This is one of the brightest spots of the whole pomegranate. Really want to get it in. And then I have this kind of in the shade, but there are some interesting things happening. So there are really bright edges in some areas here okay so I'll work just a little bit more on background again just to curve this pomegranate as I said it's a different background this time I'm painting it's very warm and it's sunlit plus it's changing fast so I took 
a bit more gamsol. Actually, I can see in this brown, I see a little bit of purplish, so I added some purple. I'm not sure if it's because pomegranate has such a strong reflective power or just overall the warmth of the painting, but I think it will actually create some harmony in pomegranate. So here it's a little kind of cooler dollar. So curve around here. So at this point I have I think most of my values in got most of my values in most of my cast shadows in you can see a little bit of dark here as well more Can be very blue, <laughs> but apparently I do see blue. And I just can't believe how quick it's changing. But I guess that's the challenge, and at the same time, good exercise when you want to paint something like that. So I'm getting some fresh paint here. Actually I can see some lit edge on this part of pomegranate now. Unfortunately it's changing so much that some of the lights I had already gone and now new lights appeared so I think I'm going to stick to what I originally created because otherwise I'm going to chase light. Actually that's what I'm doing anyway. And I didn't even take photograph of this. So we'll see where we go. So there are some really nice reds here in the grapes that I want to capture. I'm using a mixture of glycerin and cadre light. So at the back they're very dark, so I'm not going to really show them as much. But here at front they're really distinct and I'm going to do this pink line I did before a little bit more distinct because I see more pink in it
maybe I'll stop talking because I start focusing <laughs> what I'm doing I want to get these little lights don't want to miss them and I'm not going to put highlight on all of them only on the one that very distinct and I don't really like how I did it so I'm going to take a small brush and kind of separate them Sometimes you need to use small brush. Okay, so I guess while I have small brush in my hands, I'll go on the other edge of pomegranates and just do a little bit of more imitation of grapes. And this dull gray color again. Actually, you can make this color also using orange and blue, and it kind of gives you this nice gray. You need a little bit of white. I use it sometimes for skins of tangerines and pomegranates, oranges. Sometimes you can add a little bit more orange, sometimes you can add more blue. You kind of can manipulate it the way you want it. So in the areas where it's very bright, just to emphasize the how bright it is and how light it is, I'm showing more paint as well. Like in these areas, where there is this little skin of pomegranate. I'm doing mixture of white and cut yellow dip. I think it looks a little bit like pomegranate so I lost my, some of my highlights I'm going to add those And I 
just now realized that in some areas this um, skins look a bit more yellow than I painted it so I'm going to do that to correct the shape the actual pomegranate the cut pomegranate just because I started working with a small brush I lost the shape I think so I'm going to do that still using my shadow color in the shade ultramarine and brown even added a little bit to the bottom of pomegranate itself because there is some reflection in it so pomegranate so with a little bit more red in it not as bright but it does have some distinct light from the sun even at the bottom background to curve on this side so if it goes like this and then it turns that way because pomegranate has very interesting ridges within their shape and especially if there are some ripened over ripened actually seeds in it then it's shows all those ridges so now I'm going to see how I can improve this a little bit some of the skin Maybe show some little seeds as well. Not too many. I don't want to. Actually, it doesn't have even too many. I was peeling it and trying to show as many seeds as I could, but I still have lots of seeds covered by the skin. So. Anyway, I only need to give indication and then once you have this indication, the rest your eye will see. Anyway, I hope so. Okay, so there is a little bit more to be done in details of the tails of pomegranate but I don't want to go too far into that as well 
don't want to lose the freshness so I will just indicate the first one it has a little tail a little tail of the tip whatever you call it I think that should be enough. Really, what I want to do, I want to make sure this part is. I'm going to change it again, make sure we add more red. This part is bright and crisp. this shadow from the tip so everything changed here look really dark came <laughs> so I'm not going to put all darkness in it but just a little more I want, don't want to lose this distinct shadow that I had in the very beginning And I would probably leave this reflected light just dull it a little more. I'm not sure how good my plate is, but I'll leave it at this point because I don't want to keep this video very long, and I think it is already. So I probably will be able to load it on YouTube but I'm not sure if I can load it anywhere else so and now I'm going with a small brush to paint just some of the pomegranate seeds that I have here I'm not going to paint all the details of those pomegranate seeds so these like two it's here and I have these so I'm trying to paint them as well rough shapes of course I need cast shadows that's for sure so the cast shadows I'm going to use again my mixture of ultramarine and brown and then this is like a one big shape and there is this seed and then there is this seed I'm not sure if I need two of these, but okay, I'll put it there for some reason. <laughs> I'll probably carve tabletop around them, and actually, I think I may wipe one of them off. And also, wipe my hands. can see my background slightly changed to kind of purplish color and I more with blue than with um, red so I kind of like it because it will help me to modify my uh, to cover around pomegranate here more so. With blue, purple, blue. Okay, so this tabletop forgot about it. I'm going to just cover it. So I'm going to paint around those seeds later, but just for the purpose of the video, I'm going to do actual seeds, and I think that would be the end of it. So I'll do this one. 
I'll do this one maybe this a little and this highlights on some of them So they're kind of, they're very translucent. I don't know how it says. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do tabletop and cover around the seeds one more and then I'll go all around tabletop once more in the areas we need more work or where we need more light really doesn't need much work this tabletop and I don't want to focus on it with my small brush I'll just do it with a bigger brush but this is the way you cover around your seeds here I have only two seeds so I'm not going to paint more than two seeds and I think for this video I probably will cut it off because otherwise it's going to be too long but I think it gave you idea how to paint pomegranate and I think he can probably play with this cut pomegranate for a long time because it's so beautiful and you can kind of add light to it more see if you add a little bit more yellow or a little bit more white you can probably play with it a little bit of red you can play with the reflected light but I probably will do it. I'll take a break and have a look at it again. But for you, if you want to paint pomegranate, I would recommend try to just focus on shapes first and then go into details. Don't try to paint like seeds and everything else. Just paint indication of it and once you put the colors when you squint then it gives you a better idea what you need to pay ex paint extra because if you get lost in the detail and with pomegranate it's very easy you lose a big picture so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like my videos you can subscribe and you can also tell me what other fruit or vegetable or still lifes or landscapes you want to see um, but in winter for some reason I don't know why maybe it's just the way winter is cold and you want to paint fruit you want to paint something bright and warm I paint flowers a lot in summer and in winter I don't paint flowers as much because there are not as many good flowers in the shops and I like to paint flowers from my garden so I'm very picky <laughs> I like really beautiful flowers and garden flowers are some of the most beautiful ones so I think
quite unfinished, but like I said, with pomegranate you can play forever. Just want to kind of indicate the cut edge. Okay, so I'm cutting this video, but I'll continue with my painting, I think, just for a short while. And I'll see you later again. Bye.